lithium battery is going to have the most highest energy density. Along the way of 25 years, we met many talented uh, Thailand students and the Thailand postdocs. Thailand, you have two of the uh, world's best trained battery scientists and engineers. เทคออริจินอลในตอนนี้ครับเป็นตอนที่พิเศษมากที่สุดครั้งหนึ่งเพราะว่าเราได้มีโอกาสคุยกับนักวิจัยแถวหน้าของโลกในวงการแบตเตอรี่ที่ไม่ได้มีแค่หนึ่งครับแต่ถึง3คนด้วยกันคือศาสตราจารย์เอ็มสเตลลี่วิทติงแฮมผู้พัฒนารากฐานของแบตเตอรี่ลิเธียมไอออนจึงได้รับรางวัลโนเบลสาขาเคมีในปี2019รวมถึงศาสตราจารย์เย็ดมิงเชียงคนนี้คือนักวิจัยด้านวัสดุแบตเตอรี่ชั้นนำเลยครับจากสถาบันเทคโนโลยีแมสซาชูเซตหรือว่า MIT ที่เรารู้จักกันและดรวายเชอรี่เมิงครับเขาเป็นนักวิจัยด้านความปลอดภัยของแบตเตอรี่ที่สําคัญในวงการของโลกเลยครับจากมหาวิทยาลัยชิคาโกและยังเป็นนักวิจัยในห้องวิจัยแห่งชาติอากรในสหรัฐอเมริกาด้วยซึ่งทั้ง3ท่านครับมารวมตัวกันในงานประชุมเทคโนโลยีแบตเตอรี่อาเซียนหรือว่างาน ABTC เมื่อ27ถึง29สิงหาคมที่ผ่านมาครับซึ่งถ้าใครได้ดูทีเอ็นเทเราได้นําเสนอข่าวนี้ไปแล้วนะครับก่อนหน้านี้ไปตามดูกันได้ครับและทั้งหมดนี้ทําให้ TNN เทคครับใช้ความเป็นคนไทยถามมุมมองนักวิจัยระดับโลกทั้ง3คนเลยครับว่าไทยเรามีศักยภาพในการเป็นผู้นําด้านแบตเตอรี่กับเขาบ้างหรือเปล่า well, you want to get into making batteries you need to choose our say niche market don't make them for electric vehicles because it's not just China you got no South Korea three or four companies Panasonic in Japan and it's a cutthroat business so you'll never make any money so yeah, I think it's CAT or BYD are clearly making a lot of money but it's not that anybody else is making money so how do you does somebody in Thailand make money unless the government says we're banning all imports of batteries and I don't think that's likely to happen well so you also said that the ASEAN countries should go to the niche market on the batteries and what what kind of niche market that you see the potential I'm uh, saying everything that you wear LED oh Your computers, your phones, your watches, and which are much more valuable market. And I think certainly companies like Apple and Samsung, they want two or three different suppliers. Another question: um, As a researcher, what kind of knowledge that uh, any country should develop or should invest on? Well, I think you've got some good researchers in this country, and so n o so I think they can do the research. It's the next step: how do you get the research into a product? Have you got that what we call bridging technology? That's what America lacks as well. So it's not just Thailand. I think a lot of us lack that. How do we convert ideas into a product? Yeah. Do Thailand and ASEAN countries have the potential to be the world leading or at least in the region leading battery development in your opinion? And how to be at it? Very, very thoughtful question. Yes, I think the answer is absolutely yes. Okay, I'm a Singaporean. I spent the last 25 years in the U.S. I mean, of course, we went to U.S. because it's where the center of innovation, a lot of uh, incentives for people to do creative technology development, and then we can actually start companies. We can, you know, build our scientific uh, groups that we can pursue these uh, ideas. What I mean is, that in the U.S., there were lots of talented. Student went to US to pursue their higher degree, right? So the question you ask me, how we can establish the brain power in the ASEAN place? The answer is very simple. Number one is people. Okay, so if these people all decide, you know, I'm going to come back and build, that's number one ingredient. But number two, very important, is really, you know, in at least in the past, the United States government have really incentivized super intelligent people all come to this country to build their dream. Right? I think this is one of the key, and that actually requires the government to spend significant resources to support science, innovation, and The technology development. Okay, so that's the other absolutely necessary but not sufficient conditions. Okay, so the third one I would say timing is good now. Uh, as you know, many Western countries are moving towards more protectionism instead of international. Right, but I think you also know ASEAN countries. We are all so small. We cannot live. We cannot prosper if we have the isolation. So we have to work together. We have to have collaborations. We have to support each other. So I think. Uh, Timing-wise, right now is.
is a good time if uh, ASEAN really decide to build our own core competence uh, in terms of manufacturing, recycling, you know, battery ecosystem. So let's begin with research, certainly in research. Research is very democratic. Here in Thailand, you have two of the uh, world's best trained battery scientist engineers, Dr. Pimpa Lundungun, Dr. Nongak Mitang. And uh, I know that because uh, they trained at MIT with me. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so certainly the, you know, the directions of research that will be the most fruitful, those are, uh, I think, well known to the, the leading researchers here in ASEAN. So you know, research uh, benefits from collaboration across international borders, but, is, but it's a very flat earth when it comes to the research. When it comes to commercialization, you know, what I've seen here in uh, Thailand, if you just take the electric vehicles, is that the number of electric vehicle models that are on the road already here, as well as the selling prices and many more brand than I would typ I typically see Boston, especially the number of brands. And so the implementation of sustainable you know, clean energy technology uh, here is obviously uh, well on its way. So you have the research, you have the, the adoption and uh, the grid as well.